Welcome back to Landmarks Discovered. In this episode, we'll visit Palm Beach's pink paradise, the Colony Hotel. The colony was recently landmarked in 2020, and it's one of the last great hotels within the town of Palm Beach to be landmarked. That's right. And many of the hotels that we as associate with the great resort hotels of Palm Beach are built in the Mediterranean Revival style, but this hotel is actually designed in the British colonial style. Yes, and the British colonial style was really popularized by Howard Major when he built Major Isley in 1925. Correct. And the style itself is derived from British architecture from the West Indies, primarily from Bermuda, which you can really see in Major Alley. And a lot of the classical detailing associated with the style can be found on the colony, such as coins, pediments, and porticos. The colony was designed in 1947 by Simonson and Holly. Byron Simonson and Maurice Holly formed a partnership in 1945, but before that, they both worked for Addison Meisner. And Byron Simonson himself actually worked for Trainer and Fascio after Meisner's death in 1933. One of the things that I think is interesting about Byron Simonson is uh, he has some similarities, I think, to John Volk in that he evolved in the type of buildings that he was designing and the architectural style to reflect the times. I, I think that, you know, John Volk designed a lot of modern style buildings and we really see that in Byron Simonson's work as well. After the Colony Hotel, he designed La Coquille in Manalapan, which was really considered a modernist masterpiece for the time. And when we look at Byron Simonson's work around town, the only things that are really extant are the colony and a modernist home on Nightingale. And I think that's representative of what's really happened to great works of modern architecture in Palm Beach as a whole is so many of them have been demolished. And so the ones that we have today that are landmarks are so important to telling the story of the architectural styles that were popular during the mid-century era. It was such an important time for development in Palm Beach. What is really interesting, in 1945, at that post-war time, more building permits were submitted than in 1925, which was considered the huge building boom. And I think you can see that reflected in the development history of Palm Beach. Is There's a large uh, collection of Mediterranean Revival structures in the town and then you also see a lot of ranch style buildings that were popular during the post-war period. The colony is an impressive landmark at the end of Worth Avenue but its main street is Hammond Avenue which is named after Hiram Hammond which was one of the first pioneers here in Palm Beach in 1874. He is also one of the first people to sell his homestead at a major profit of a million dollars to Paris Singer. Not only is the Colony Hotel significant for its location, but also for the individuals that have been associated with the hotel throughout its history. Their business acumen really contributed to the hotel's identity as a social destination. For instance, the Waller family that built the hotel in 1947 actually purchased the land where the hotel is located from Hiram Hammond in 1921 and built a large Spanish estate there called Casa Manana. Today, Casa Manana is one of the villas associated with the hotel. 
Two years after the colony opened to great success, it was leased by a group of prominent Palm Beach residents led by Bernard Cooley, and they made the decision to open the hotel year round. And this was really substantial because back in the 1950s, you know, it was still very seasonal here in Palm Beach. I think it signaled a, a change in, you know, Florida being a primary residence for a lot of people. And a lot of people were coming down all year round. And it seemed to me like a lot of people were taking rooms at the colony even if they lived here. One of the things I noted in the designation report is that Marjorie Merriweather Post, when she no longer had any rooms available at Mar-a-Lago, would put her guests up at the colony. Those must have been some parties if she ran out of room at Mar-a-Lago. And when we think about that time in the 1950s, we always think of things very brightly colored and sorbet-like. It's really interesting to know that the colony was originally painted brown. That was shocking to me because in my mind, I've always associated it with its current color, but that's something that actually happened rather recently, I believe in 2014. The main design of the colony really remained unchanged from Simonson and Holly's design. However, in the mid-1950s, they hired architect Philip Julian to kind of bring the pool area into the mid-century modern style. And he designed an area with a curvilinear roof and martini-shaped columns. Which I really think set the stage for Joseph Tankus to take over the lease in 1959. Tankus also held the lease for the popular Delmonico's in New York, and he brought that celebrity culture with him to the colony. During Tankus's ownership, Palm Beach Life magazine regularly reported on the comings and goings of well-known personalities that were staying at the hotel. In fact, the magazine also said that it had developed an international reputation for its continental charm and modern sophistication, and that it was the place to stay while on winter holiday in Palm Beach. In 1970, Joseph Tanku sold the property to the Colony Hotel Partners, and there were many stakeholders throughout the years, but one consistent one was Robert Wettenhall. And when they owned it, they started a new renovation, particularly of the exterior, enlightening that drab brown color to a light mustard and adding in some Bermuda shutters and really lightening the place up. And Robert Wettenhall actually maintained a minor stake in the business uh, through many decades. And in 2016, his son, Andrew, and daughter-in-law, Sarah, purchased the hotel. We had the opportunity to sit down with Sarah in the filming of this episode. And one of the things that I think is remarkable about her and Andrew's ownership of the hotel is the passion that they've brought to each one of the projects they've undertaken since their ownership began in 2016. They also have put in an incredible amount of research into each one of these projects. It's also notable that they both embraced the process for the building becoming a landmark. So the villa building, um, it was originally called Casa Manana, and that was the, the family that built the colony. That was their original home, actually, yeah. And uh, my father-in-law, Bob Wettenhall, purchased it in the late 80s when it was fallen, unfortunately had fallen on some disrepair. And um, he restored it, he added on to it a bit and got permission from the town to turn it into the seven two bedroom, two bath villas that it is today. You know, we had Erin Lauder recently kind of put her reinvention on Villa Jasmine. And so that was a lot of fun, again, to have her kind of reinterpretation on Palm Beach style. Um, she's another just classic Palm Beacher who um, obviously has been on the island for a very long time. We definitely have a uh, illustrious roster of well-known names. I would say probably the best known um, who stayed for the longest time were the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. They made their winter residence at the colony in our penthouse for a couple of consecutive seasons. And it was always said um, after the Duke passed, the Duchess of Windsor said that some of her best years and her best memories were actually made in Palm Beach when she was living at the colony. So that's pretty special when you think about that. Um, but uh, Judy Garland has stayed with us before. Um, Zsa Zsa Gabor has stayed with us before. Um, John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Um, so yeah, we have a, 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 pretty, a pretty interesting and fun list of celebrity clientele over the years. So I found out about the terrazzo through my father-in-law, through, through kind of the oral history and the stories and the snippets that I get through him. So at one point in time, he was telling me about 
um, the beautiful black floor. And I was like, well, hold the phone, black floor. And about that same time, I discovered these postcards. Um, and if you look on eBay, and if you look um, at these other auction sites online, people are always selling old memorabilia. And I got in the habit of kind of once a week I go on and I just buy up everything from the colony um, because I think that I should own it. Um, and so I started buying up old postcards. Um, and, and often they're the same ones, but every once in a while you run into this amazing gem that is just absolutely fabulous. And I ran into a few gems that were images of the original lobby. And they had this black floor. And so I, I called Shapiro partner, Josh, who's our contractor, and I was like, okay, you're gonna kill me, but can we do an investigation and see if this floor is under here? And he was like, well, we can do anything, theoretically, but... And so we had a conversation and went back and forth and decided finally that under one of our reception desks, it was hidden enough that we could do an exploration and see if the current marble tile was laid on top of the existing terrazzo floor. And so we chopped it up and chopped it up and crossed our fingers and lo and behold, they had merely laid the floor on top of the old terrazzo. So that was how the terrazzo kind of uh, wormhole began. Um, and in the same postcard, I saw the original mural that was on the back wall of the lobby titled The Early Days of Palm Beach. And it featured the Flagler train car and the Palm Beach Pier and a lovely Palm Beach lady with her long skirts kind of pulled up and she was tiptoeing through the sand and the palm trees and a flamingo. And it was just, it was a Palm Beach mural and it was on the back wall of the hotel lobby. And that got me thinking that I think we need to have a mural again. And although that one was lost to time, we could bring back a, a fresh modern take of today's days in Palm Beach. I've long been a fan of de Gournay and their, their murals and their work. Um, you know, the craftsmanship is just, just beyond this world. It's absolutely incredible. And they're also a family, you know, a family run entity. Um, and so I was introduced to Hannah and we just, it was a match made in heaven. Similarly, it, it, it was it was just there. There was literally no other choice. I, I had um, I'd always ad admired Celery's work um, in New York. We had been inter introduced by mutual friends in New York City, and we have children of similar age. And so um, when we purchased the hotel, she was actually my first or second phone call. As I called Celery and was like, "What do you think? You know, I I feel like you guys are a natural fit. Are you interested?" And she was like, am I interested? Uh, um, and so shortly thereafter, I was introduced to, to Mimi McMakin, her mother, who runs the operation down here. And, um, and ever since then, we've been off to the races. I mean, Mimi and I have a blast, and her team down here are just stellar. They obviously are the epitome of Palm Beach design. And, you know, we're now at a place, you know, four years in that, I feel like we can kind of read each other's minds. Um, we're so excited to be rehanging the chandelier on the South County entrance, those steps coming up South County. Um, you know, that has been, to me, one of my big goals. Um, obviously, the lobby project um, has been very exciting, has been very gratifying, but a sidebar off of that and a big piece of enlivening the lobby for me has been frankly putting the visual focal point back on the South County entrance of our hotel. Um, you know, again, if you look at those postcards, if you look at the visual history of the hotel, even if you look at the architect's renderings and what the older photography looks like going back to the 40s and 50s. They focused on the South County entrance and we needed to signal to the town of Palm Beach that we were open, that we were welcoming, and that those steps were a place that was alive and active and happy and a gathering place for, for the town of Palm Beach. I think for us, um, you know, we embraced landmarking the building 
First and foremost, because the colony, we, you know, we call her the pink paradise. We say the, col the colony's female to us. Um, you know, we knew this building was never going to change. Um, we would never want to change her. And so for us, landmarking was never a question. Um, she deserved to be landmarked. She should be landmarked. And for us, in a lot of ways, she was already landmarked in our mind. So it was really the best of all worlds. Um, and so for us, you know, we were, we were proud to, to do it. We were proud to help preserve the heritage of Palm Beach. We were proud to kind of put our stamp on the corner of Hammond and South County and really make sure that at least our little corner of town for the future would remain looking the way that we believed it should be looking going forward. Thanks for joining us for Landmarks Discovered. We release new episodes every month, and next month we'll take you to another landmark property in the town of Palm Beach. In the meantime, check out our YouTube page to stream past episodes anytime.